Hello! Sorry that I'm late for those of you who are here live. Um, Jess and I were doing a little podcast recording and um, it takes forever for the upload to finish. So apologies for that, but you know, hopefully for those of you who are podcast viewers slash listeners, you will appreciate that here in a couple weeks. Um, so you can tell I felt like we had enough of a quorum for us to do nonfiction. So I'm glad that you guys are excited for this. I just couldn't, people, the views are always so bad on nonfiction things. I can never tell if people actually want it. Um, so it was good to get some reassurance that people, it's like a, a smaller but mighty crew of folks who are interested. So hello, hello. I'm a nonfiction and fantasy kind of gal. So looking forward to it. Yay. I'm glad. Hello. Hello. Everything but lit fic. That's basically me too, Beth. Um, hello. Rarely read nonfiction, but would love some recs. I think we can do that. Hope everyone's well. It's chilly in California. Perfect for a cozy chat about books. I love that for you. Hello. Oh yeah. Happy almost Friday. Almost New Year's. Um, yeah, it's chilly here today too. I think we're going to get some snow tonight. So, um, let's see here. I'm glad you guys are so excited. We're going to do the same thing we've been doing the last few times. Um, oh my gosh, my favorite nonfiction was a wreck from you. So I'm excited. Heather, I'm so excited. I hope I give you something else to enjoy. Um, we're going to do the same format where once I'm done saying hi to everyone, I'm going to focus on doing the list so that if you are on the replay crew, you don't have to hear me talking to the chat. You can just get the list and then we'll come back to comments um, once I get through the list. So unreasonably warm in Buffalo, which is 50. Whew, what a time. Hello, hello. First time catching live. Love that. Welcome, welcome. Nonfiction is a hard genre for me because it's so much broader than any other genre categorizations. It's so true. It encompasses a wide variety of things. And honestly, some of my favorite nonfic, a lot of my, well, we'll get into it in just a second. I'll wait till we get to the list. Hello. The first year in forever I've read nonfiction and loved it. I love that for you. Always looking for more nonfiction recs. I'm glad you're liking the format. I think it, it works well. Making nonfiction a bigger part of 2024. Excited to get Rex. Oh, hello to Anchorage. Okay, so I am timestamping at three minutes. We're going to start the list. So for those on the replay crew, we're going to focus on the list so that you don't have to hear the chat if you don't want to. So um, nonfiction for me in 2023 was kind of weird because a lot of the time I would have spent reading nonfiction. I did read nonfiction, but it was like how to nonfiction because I read a ton of things about sewing this year <laughs> as I was trying to like figure out how to do things. So I, that was a big nonfiction realization. The other big nonfiction realization I had is that I just prefer most nonfiction these days in audio so I have some nonfiction that's been on my TBR for a long time that I just keep not getting to because it's physical. So I don't know. I feel like I'm going through some like growing pains in my nonfiction. So I actually didn't have, I, I had seven books that I had flagged and I realized like, I'm just going to make it a top five because really those are the ones I feel strongly about. Um, but next year we'll see. I'm hopeful We'll see. Let's just leave it at that. So uh, number five is going to be a science history book that I read towards the beginning of the year, which was Origin by Jennifer Raff. And I believe I put these in the description because I don't have all of these in physical form. So if you want to catch what those are, you can go check out the description if you need a reminder of what the names are. So Origin by Jennifer Raff um, is, it's a, like I said, it's science history and it's talking about, it's part of what I really loved about it was, was that it was very interdisciplinary. So it is looking at the origins of indigenous people in the Americas 
And it's looking at the archaeology, it's looking at DNA, it's looking at cultural history. Um, it really is looking at all these different disciplines to kind of tell the story. And I just thought it was also a really good example of how, like talking about how the scientific method should work, which is as you have more information, as you have more data, you know, you change theories or the theories like get nuanced or uh, theories are abandoned if there's new data that like completely contradicts it. So I really enjoyed it as a, so the topic about the origins of native peoples of the America was super interesting. So that was an interesting topic in and of itself. And then I felt like sort of bigger picture wise, I was very um, engaged by how many different disciplines it explored and how it sort of was a good representation of what it means to change your mind as more data becomes available. So anyway, I thought it was a super interesting read, not like the best written nonfiction I've ever encountered, but I really, I really enjoyed it. So that was number five. Number four is why women have better sex under socialism by Kirsten, Kristen Goetze think is how you say that last name. Um, I also did this one as audio at, towards the beginning of the year. And I thought it was just a really interesting. So um, I am from the U US, obviously. And um, we get a lot of very specific narratives about socialism and communism in our schooling. Um, and this one of the things that I at least assumed was um, that or kind of the thing that I have been taught was like, this was just like oppressive all around. Like the, you know, communist regimes are just always intrinsically oppressive, including oppressive to women. And, and this book is exploring um, a couple of different things about gender and socialism. But one of the things that really stuck out to me was the difference in the memory of men and women who lived under the, um, USSR, like the Soviet bloc, that a lot of the men tended to have much more negative memories of that time than the women did, because when these countries um, opened up and became like capitalist, a lot of the social structures and support that these women had to um, for the workplace and for family life went away. And it just, it, I think it's a really interesting it just made me rethink some of my own assumptions. So um, I don't know enough about the history in that area yet to like be able to tell you for sure, like this is, you know, not an outlier view, but I just thought it was a really interesting little book. And it kind of just made me like reconsider some of my assumptions about this time in history. Um, and I don't know. Anyway, I just thought it was it was very interesting and uh, worth worth a read. It's also super short. So I think that um, for that reason, it felt like it should be at number four. OK, number three, I have in physical form so I can show you. And that is When the Moon Turned to Blood. Lori Vallow, Chad Daybell, and A Story of Murder, Wild Faith, and End Times by Leah Sotilli. This is true crime. So this is a true crime book about the horrible murders of, the, of Lori Vallow's children, the murder of um, Chad Daybell's wife, and of Lori Vallow's husband. So... Um, I this so it's true crime because it's exploring those murders. If you don't like true crime at all, you're not going to like this book. I will say though, if you are reading this for the true crime element, I also don't think you will like this book <laughs> because really what this is exploring is the religious connections in both of these people's lives and how um, that led to the things that ended up happening. So yes, we do get um, 
we do get elements of the crime in here. So I don't, I don't want people to think that this has nothing to do with the crimes, because if you're not expecting that and you don't want to read it, that would not be a good reading experience. But what I really enjoyed was kind of this analysis of both the Mormon influences or the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saint influences on these two um, alt-right politics. And then also like the West, this author has done a lot of, um, coverage about sort of like the Western America experience. Like it has its own specific kind of culture and flavor to things. And I think she also incorporates some of that. So I just thought that this was a super well done book for what it is, but I just don't know. I think like if you have zero interest in the religion or you have zero interest in true crime, don't read this book because this really is like the intersection. Um, or if you don't want to read the full book, but you want to kind of hear some of the things that are discussed, there's a really great book club that Mormon Stories podcast did with the author that I thought did a good job of summing up some of the major themes. So I would also recommend that if you don't want to commit to a full book, but are interested in this topic. I did this one originally as audio and I can recommend the audio. It was good. And then for my number two is a four and a half. Hi, Marple. Can you guys see Marple back here? Um, number two is a four and a half, which is the fabric of civilization, how textiles made the world by Virginia Postrel. Like I mentioned, I've been doing a lot of reading and thinking about clothing this year um, in terms of its construction and its origins and appreciating what it takes to make clothing. And this again, is so interdisciplinary, kind of like what I was talking about with origin. It's really an exploration and celebration of what an amazing technology threads, fibers, and fabric are, and how intrinsic they are to our civilization and the history of civilization. Um, and I think because fabric and clothing and textiles and kind of like the homemaking characteristics around this sometimes are so much seen as women's work. I really think that this is kind of a reclamation and celebration of something that could be considered like women's history, even though like men have been very heavily involved, obviously, in this trade. Um, at least in today's world, I think a lot of times that is sort of like feminized or seen as women's work. And just like really this like when I first read this, it like made me feel emotional because it really made me just it made me feel connection to our shared human story and just in awe of like what our ancestors have had to do to figure things out to be able to survive. I don't know. Like I just it made me feel connected to humans across time and place in a way that I found really beautiful. Um, it's a different kind of take on history. It does have some like history of science as different like technologies are innovated throughout. And it kind of goes from the fiber up. That's how it's structured. So I'm trying to remember. I think the first one is just about fibers. Yeah. Okay. It goes fiber, thread, cloth, dye, traders, consumers, innovators. So it's sort of like showing it's like the piece of fabric is being built. Um, and you get to like hear about the history and hear about innovations and all of that. So anyway, I just thought that this was a really, it's a different take on history. And as somebody who's been definitely on a journey of like appreciating the work and technology of clothing construction, I, th this just really connected with me. So I thought this was really well done, good as an audiobook, um, and just something that really connected with me this year. And then number one should not be a surprise if you've been watching the channel recently, but I would definitely say number one and my only five star is Freedom is a Constant Struggle by Angela Y. Davis. Um, this is my most recommended book of the year, the book I would most recommend anybody read, especially if you're in the U.S. It is connecting um, kind of like philosophically the um, solidarity movements of prison reform, Black Lives Matter and uh palestinian freedom so it's uh it's a very approachable book because the format is interviews and uh essays slash speeches 
So it's a very, there's a lot of ideas in it. It's a very short book, but it is very dense in what it all, what all it covers. And yet it is very accessible because of the format. So like, I think Angela Davis is an incredible communicator. She's able to explain things really clearly in a way that really helps connect some dots. And um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I feel like you should just read it. <laughs> like That's kind of my bottom line. And it was definitely both the content, but also just it in its form, I found to be really compelling. I found um, just the the way that there were essays and the interviews together really, really just a, a really good approach to the to the material. So for me, most recommended of the year, best nonfiction kind of by a country mile. So yeah, okay. Time stamping at sixteen ten. And we'll go to chat. Okay. Let me scroll back up here. Okay, I'm glad you guys like this format. I'll keep this in mind for next year if that's how things time out again. My main fiction with not my main issue with nonfiction is simply that I'm an audiobook consuming non-native English speaker. Yeah, I mean totally understand. Totally understand that. Okay. Can we get to your favorite how-to sewing nonfiction? Also interested in good sewing books. <sighs> I'm trying to think if I could pick like one. Um, I've really enjoyed the Reader's <laughs> Digest Guide to Sewing. That has been helpful. Uh, for hand sewing, the Bernadette Banner book was really helpful. It had really good illustrations. Um... It kind of depended on the project. Like I was referring to a lot of different ones. So I'm trying to learn to knit right now. And I'm really, uh, I'm finding the Vogue knitting guide very helpful. So I've got Origin. I haven't read it yet. I hope you enjoy it. I struggle so bad with physically reading nonfiction. It's like the information won't go in unless my hands and brain are both busy. I do really like an audio. Like I, I enjoy like knitting or embroidery or playing a game on my phone. Like I like to have something for my hands to do while I'm listening. Cause it helps me process it. Um, I used to do that in college too, actually. Like I would always warn my professors like, Hey, you might see me doing Sudoku, but I need to do that so that I can focus on what you're saying. Like I promise I'm going to switch over and take notes as I need to, but like, Please don't be offended. This is just like how I can make sure that I am focusing on what you're talking about. Um, kind of sounds like deconstruction. I don't, I don't remember what that's in reference to, but yes, lots of things remind me of deconstruction. Um, Let's see here. I'm the opposite. I need the words on the page to take the information in, but I struggle with audiobooks in general to my great frustration. Ugh. I, I feel that way if um so I for nonfiction, I feel like I kind of have two different modes. If I'm like kind of trying to absorb overall, I do better with audio. If I'm really needing to like focus on the details, I do like it in physical. Like if I'm really trying to like focus on the details. I agree. Physical works better for me, but for most nonfiction, I'm not really trying to retain every single detail. I'm trying to like get in the flow of the overall picture they're painting. And, um, I find that audiobooks work better for me for that. Hello to NYC. 
Some people are agreeing with Carrie on that one. I'm trying to get more into audiobooks, but it's hard for me to retain information from listening versus seeing words on a page. Yeah. I think, you know, everybody is so different in terms of like how they process information and what kinds of information they can process in different ways. I'm glad that we have lots of different tools these days um, to process. Hello to Alberta. Thank you for doing this. Love your commentary on books. I will definitely watch later. Have a meeting. Oh, that is so kind, Jason. Thank you so much. I'm actually from an ex-Soviet country. Oh, okay. My grandmother lived through communism and she felt really safe, but my grandpa hated the regime. That's so interesting. Okay. I mean, anecdata, but yeah, there's another um, kind of endorsement for that perspective of different people getting different things from the same system. Sewing books. Yeah, I feel like... Um, yeah, I, I just referenced so many this year. I, if I had to give one recommendation, it would be the Reader's Digest Complete Guide to Sewing. But yeah, that is really interesting. There was definitely a lot of covered up abuse in all aspects during the regime from my experience with older folks who lived through it. That totally makes sense. That totally makes sense. Um... And I do think, I want to say, I don't think that book is, like, glorifying that time. I think it's really just trying to, like, problematize the narrative that capitalism is, like, better in every single respect. So, just a side note there. When the Moon Turns to Blood was a rough read, yeah, and startling to hear about the influence of certain internet forums. I know my mom visits. Ooh, that is, that is tough stuff. Um, but I do think it's informative in terms of, like, not underplaying potential harms that some of those things can do so it's easy to be like oh it's just it's just a forum and it's like oh well it turns out this forum is where people got some really scary ideas and made some really scary connections um i can definitely see it being a bigger factor for the main caretaker and homemaker yeah going back to the um socialism thing that whole case is horrific i'm interested in your thoughts on the book Yes, Kitty in the background again, actually. Here's Marple, if you can't tell, is very annoyed that I have not yet fed her. So <laughs> I'm going to have to do that soon. Uh, wondered if there's a good book about that case. Yeah, I think that there'll probably be more coming out, but I thought it was good. Um, I've always wanted to learn how to sew, but it's so intimidating. I will say, especially with YouTube, it's it's totally doable. Not that I'm by any stretch a master sewist but we're getting there i love craft books to dig into process and materials and history yes i uh, heard about fabric from another podcast yes i hope you enjoy it it's really really good um i love a micro history of the way people live rather than big stuff like wars yeah that's the other thing that's really cool about fa um, the fabric of civilization is i think it is kind of like celebrating social history in a way that sometimes gets overlooked um, there are some great YouTube videos that um, that teach sewing. If if I can make a dress at age 11, you can do it. It's kind of like learning a language. Once you learn the basic phrases, it's easier. Yeah. And I think it's definitely like a, a practice makes perfect kind of thing. I think the idea of hand sewing is most intimidating to me. I have really shaky hands. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I read Freedom is a Constant Struggle in November. It was such an easily consumable delivery of such big topics. And I think it'd be one that'd be a good reread. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Oh, yeah, you just mentioned it. Jess's Communa Read for January. So Jess Owens, her Communa Read is Freedom is a Constant Struggle. So I'm definitely going to reread it before she does her live show. Good. I hope you enjoy. Hello to Costa Rica. Um, have you read Nora Ericott's Justice for Some? I feel like you'd really enjoy it. No, but I'll have to look it up. I need more books to read, right? Ooh, okay, yeah. This sounds like I'm I'm almost done with um except for Palestine. This sounds like it would go well with that. <laughs> The Reader's Digest Guide's been very helpful in my various crafts I've taken up. Yeah, it's very easy to understand, and it's a good just sort of like solid reference 
book when I have questions about how to do things. Um, I was wondering about the Bernadette Banner book. I love her channel. I thought that it was, uh, it's a really good hand sewing guide for sure. How's my sock coming? Um, I am also just starting the heel flap, um, which I'm actually very much enjoying that little stitch process. Freedom is a constant struggle is on my TBR. I'm glad to hear it's easily consumable for the topic since I'm very interested in it. Yeah. And I didn't do that one on audio. I should mention I've had that ebook for a long time. So I just read the ebook. Um, I can handle memoirs on audio, but I need physical books for other nonfiction. Yeah, it's so interesting. It's so interesting how the different genres impact it. You might also like women's work the first 20,000 years. Yes, I have this on my TBR. I've heard that this is great. It's by Elizabeth Whalen Barber. She talks a lot about textiles and spinning fibers. Yeah, I've heard great things about that. So I'm hoping I'll get to it eventually. But part of my problem with nonfiction is it does take me longer to get through it usually. And I have so many nonfiction books I want to read. <laughs> uh, for audiobooks, I also tend to fall asleep. Oh, yeah, that would be a problem. Off topic, Mar, have you watched Babity Kate's Kirsten American Girl Deep Dive? I think you would love it. They're sewing, reading, and excellent delivery. So I read, I watched her um, kind of like They're Lying to You American Girl video. And I'm going to watch that Kirsten one, but it's like four hours and I just have not sat down to do it yet. Um, but it looks great. And I enjoyed her energy and delivery. I will particularly be looking out whenever she does her Felicity one. But I feel like I need to retain the info from nonfiction. So I usually need to focus really hard, which is hard with ADD. So I need both audio and physical. Yeah, I've, I, I think a, a combo read can be a great, a great approach for nonfiction. Women's Work sounds like a good book. Yeah, I've heard great things about that one. Um, finally got through W.E.B. Du Bois's Black Reconstruction in America this year. Three, 37 and a half hours of audio, but very rewarding. Could not agree more. One of my all-time favorite books. One of my all-time favorite nonfiction books. It's so beautifully written and horrifying. Ugh, it's so good. I know it's, an, I know it's big, <laughs> but I think it's really worth the effort um, if people are willing to, to go there. Oh, okay. I got a lot of people looking at women's work. Um, my top nonfiction reads of 2023 are Strong Female Character by Fern Brady, which is a memoir, and Punished for Dreaming by Bettina L. Love, which is Education, History, Sociology, and so Social Justice. I have not heard the Bettina Love one, but um, I have heard good things about Strong Female Character. I think that was a Goodreads nominee. Also, yes, definitely a micro history person, too. I love learning about individuals and details about things rather than just being told things in broad terms. Yeah, I really my very favorite nonfiction is a history of ideas. Those are my just candy. But I read The Collected Schizophrenia this year by Esme Weijung Wong, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. A very narrative and well-written memoir. Okay. Um, it's like six hours and I don't understand how it's worth every minute. Oh, the, um, freedom is a constant struggle. I'm surprised it's that long. Honestly, it's a, um, reading with your eyeballs is pretty easy to get through that one. Um, interesting. Well, good to know that the audio works. Uh, the angst of there's so many nonfiction books I want to read is so real. It's just, I mean, nonfiction, I, all of it, there's so many books I want to read. <laughs> and yet so little time. Oh, the American Girl Doll video is six hours. Sorry. I thought you were talking about freedom is a constant struggle as the audio. And I was like, really? How is it that long? Um, late to live, but loving the discussion. Welcome, welcome. I will say, though, speaking of, uh, you know, on the topic of nonfiction, I guess, and a, a long video um, that is worth your time is Plagiarism in YouTube by H Bomber Guy. Obsessed. And, oh, I can't, I don't want to get up to reach it. But anyway, he goes through a bunch of, like, plagiarism things. It's four hours long. And yet I ate it up with a spoon. And one of the main folks he talks about their plagiarism uh, with is James Summerton, who is a uh, queer uh, movie 
video essayist. So it did inspire me um, to pick up, it came from the closet, which is a anthology of queer um, like essays about different horror movies. So tying in a super long YouTube video with a nonfiction book I recently read. Um, let's see here. So many great nonfiction reads this year. Best might be tasting history. I got that as a cookbook, but I didn't read it through. Is it good to read through just like as a book? Uh, anyone into social theory, Duke University Press has two half off sales, one for spring cleaning and one for Black Friday. I die twice a year. That is good to know because those university press books are expensive. I did listen to the audio freedom is a constant struggle, though, and the author reads it. It was slow, but easy to listen to. Okay, good to know. And it is also six hours. There we go. Um, I randomly watched that plagiarism video also. I It's got like 11 million views. So love the Tasting History channel. Angela Davis also has a new book coming out the first week of next month. If anyone's an abolitionist here, that's good to know. She's a beautiful writer or like her. She's just a very clear communicator for how complex the thought, the things she's discussing are. I think she's just really... Even if, I mean, I I do agree with what she's saying, but even if you end up not agreeing with her, I think that she's a good deliverer of the ideas. Um, I would read portions at a time, but I'm also a big fan of the Tasting History channel. I don't think I've ever really watched that channel, but maybe I should. Because I, I just got the cookbook because it sounded cool. Um, but I didn't realize there was a channel, so I'll have to dive in there. Yes, Plagiarism and You Too by H. Bomber Guy. Highly recommended. There's also one from Todd in the Shadows. So that's so the plagiarism one is talking about the plagiarism that several people do, including James Summerton. And then Todd in the Shadows did one talking about um, factual, like misrepresentations or lies in um, in uh, James Summerton's videos. So that is yes. Thank you, Cami. Just a random compliment. Uh, watch the channel. It's deaf your type of thing. Okay. Well, I'll have to look it up. It does sound like my kind of thing. As evidenced by me getting the cookbook. Talk. Oh my gosh. You're so kind. You're so kind. Um, I'm glad that I'm at least fooling you guys. <laughs> feel like a dingus most of the time um anyway i i'm glad you guys were pushing me to do nonfiction. um i'm glad you guys there's also folks who out there who enjoy nonfiction. um i didn't want to wear you guys out with lists this year but if you're um but if you guys are still looking for it and it's a good reminder to me to keep to keep persevering so i feel like you had less classics than normal on my favorites this year i yeah i did i did too any advice to not feel like you've run out of classics to read bailey if you figure that out let me know <laughs> no i mean one thing that i'm trying to do is like get more intentional about looking for classics and um languages that are not English, French, or Russian, because we have a lot of that available in English translation. Um, that is going to be one avenue I explore. Also more sort of like more recent classics or like modern classics. Cause I feel like there's a lot of things from like, let's say the forties through the seventies that probably are about ready to be considered a classic at this point that I've not read. Um, but I'm also, yeah, I feel like at some point I need, and I actually, I think one of the ways I'm going to do this is um, reading some of those little cloth bound classics because they do have a lot of things in translation. I know it's particularly from Japanese, which is cool. Um, so that's one thing I'm going to start to explore, but I, I, I hear you. 
it also like this gets into the whole notion of like what are classics and like how do we even arrive at the canon and should we be reading more to broaden what we even think of as being in the quote unquote canon who knows um he had an interview this week with chef michael twitty excellent if you're interested in Brazilian classics, I recommend Mercado DSC or Clarice Lispector. Okay, Clarice Lispector, I have at least one from a little cloth-bound classic, so I could definitely check that out. Uh, Khalil Gibran is amazing if you're looking for Arabic classics, beautiful prose. I also believe I have a little cloth-bound classic from that person, so there you go. Um, started Mediocre by Ijoma, Ijoma Iluo. I like it thus far. Yeah, that is a really good one. There's also, uh, speaking of Communa Reed, there is an old discussion on that on Jess's channel if you want to see a book club on that. Okay, pals. Um, Marple is like glowering at me from the chair <laughs> because I need to feed her. Uh, Hastings will kind of let things ride if there's no food, but like Marple wants to be fed. Um, so... I should start winding things down. Have I read 100 Years of Solitude? It is not for me. I, it's been a while since... Maybe I should try it again. Because it's been a while since I tried it. But it did not click with me. Good night and Happy New Year, everyone. Yes, Happy New Year on Saturday will be my favorite books of the year. My top 10. So tune in for that. I'm very excited. It's always such a happy video. And then um, my next live, I think, will be me and Bethany had a collab. We did the first half on her channel in a live. And then we're going to do it here. I also have a collab with Leanna coming up that will be on a live on her channel and mine. So those are both coming in January. Um, and then I've got a bunch of like beginning of the year stuff that will be coming out for goals etc. I don't know. I've got a, this, this is the time of year where I have the most energy to do book two because I'm in my hibernation phase. So there's a lot of exciting things coming up. I hope you guys will enjoy. But yes, happy new year. Uh, just read a Kui Miao Jing book from them and loved it. Okay, good to know. Yeah, underground classics. That's it. I think that's the right Bailey. I think that's the right tact is to like look off the beaten trail a little bit. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh my gosh, Heather. Stop it. You are just too kind to me. You're too good for my ego. Have a good rest of the week. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go feed the kitty cat. I hope you guys have a great new year. Um, hope you enjoy the video on Saturday. And I will just talk to you soon. Bye.